Music, athletics, arts, and entertainment. The Desert Tiger Podcast with Colton Geschwader. Since I've started the Desert Tiger Podcast, there's been a lot of opportunities. A lot of opportunities that just haven't worked out. A lot of interviews that fell through due to timing or miscommunication or the stars just not aligning, whatever it is. And sometimes, I just don't even get an answer at all. That's not me trying to throw anyone under the bus. That's just the nature of the media business. But sometimes, sometimes things fall into your favor. Sure, taking a phone call is way cheaper and it's a hell of a lot easier. But there's just something, something about doing the interview in person that gives it more heart and soul. There's a connection. Sometimes it takes guests a while to get comfortable, but once they finally do, that's my favorite part, because you get to see who they are as an actual human being. I was set to interview Nathan and Greg of Too Soon Monsoon before I moved to BC, but the timing didn't align. Thankfully, though... Too Soon Monsoon happened to be touring the West Coast in support of their new EP, Side Effects, and happened to be stopping in close to my new home of Kamloops. I felt like it was destined to be, and I made the interview for before the show. I first heard of Too Soon Monsoon when a friend of mine was raving on about a two-piece drum and keyboard duo that had just torn up the first round of Queen City Rocks my local radio station's Battle of the Bands. A lot of people were kind of upset, though, because the group wasn't from Regina, and many argued they didn't fit the rock and roll radio persona. So I myself needed to make judgment on Too Soon Monsoon and went to the finals of Queen City Rocks to see them play. And I must say, I wasn't disappointed. I could clearly see that these two individuals fit the description of the storm their name so describes. A storm of influences as clear as day. If you've ever seen an act like Elton John or Billy Joel or a Phil Collins or a Meg White, you can clearly see that shine through in Greg and Nathan. Both of them are a true description of the soul of rock and roll, filled with pop influences like Justin Timberlake and Alicia Keys. Their stage presence is enamoring. Projection is fantastic, and it completely draws you in. Playing instruments that require them to stay in one place, both members still find a way to fill their respective space with energy, passion, and a little bit of fire. I was sold from that moment, and I have been ever since. The duo have released two EPs in 2017, those being Little Fire and October 20th's Side Effects. And let me tell you, Too Soon Monsoon has no intention of slowing down. With their eyes set on conquering the Canadian pop rock scene, I have full faith that these guys will be able to do it. Welcome to the Desert Tiger Podcast. This is episode 9 and I am your host, Colton Geschwaner. Thank you for tuning in today. And we're going to get into a song by Too Soon Monsoon before we get into our interview. So this is Faded. My mind feels hazy. Words are coming on lazy. Legs are shaking. This doesn't feel like it used to Memories faded Further away I'm fading I'm fading I'm fading further away yeah. Had a thought but I lost it Now I'm sitting here thoughtless It's an unusual feeling A little deceiving When I'm tired of trying to focus and trying to meet the composure I let myself over consume And I let it go, I let it go But oh, my mind feels hazy These words are coming on lazy My legs are shaking This doesn't feel like it
jump out of my skin So I ask for some reassurance And I let it go, I let it go to the show too soon monsoon out of saskatoon hello who are you and what do you play in the band who well, are we my name is nathan henry and i am the drummer yeah my name is greg i play the keyboard and sing for too soon monsoon we're from saskatoon we got together last september and we've been playing together as a duo ever since all right, so let's talk about how you guys ended up meeting. So, what brought Too Soon Monsoon together? A Kijiji ad that a I a Kijiji um, ad, yeah, <laughs> that I responded to. Yeah, Nathan's always scouring Kijiji for for deals, and it's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was uh, I wasn't living in Saskatoon at the time, so I didn't really know any players or drummers in the city. It's time to kind of start a band in Saskatoon, so I threw an ad on Kijiji saying I was looking for some people who are interested in starting a band, kind of put some of interest, influences and stuff on there, a link to a song, and then Nathan replied to it pretty quickly. Nice. And then, yeah, we kind of were chatting for yeah. about a week or so, and then decided to meet up in his garage for a jam, and it was good. Yeah. It's been good ever since. <laughs> Magic Kijiji, bringing yeah, people yeah. together. Works great. Right. <laughs> the men seeking men ads. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys are currently in the middle of a Western Canadian tour, are That's you great. not? Yeah. So how's that going? How's the road for you? Oh, it's been great. Beautiful weather. Beautiful places. Yeah, it's been fun. It's pretty, I don't know, it's easy traveling with two people. It's nice. We just have one vehicle. It's easy accommodations. and It's awesome going through Canada, driving through the mountains. This is my first time ever really actually like, driving. Yeah myself through the mountains so okay there's some, some fun <laughs> so you have been the through the mountains before then or um yeah like when i was a teenager for hockey once we came out to abbotsford mm-hmm. but now this is nice we were able to stop and enjoy and yeah. check out different places when we want to and okay awesome. so the views are worth all the ear pain oh. i'm hope- guessing <laughs> yeah Absolutely. lots of popping up and down yeah, <laughs> yeah so a little hard on the brakes vehicle brakes too but all right so <laughs> So, what is your favorite part of the road so far? Like, favorite city? Your favorite... Venue? It could be a city, it could be a venue, could have been a restaurant. <laughs> we just it had a just bunch be of views. Awesome I feel like we stuffed our faces. Yeah, Kelowna in has so many great <laughs> places to eat. Yeah, I yeah. just uh, went to, what was it, the uh, Grateful Fed. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, we yeah. saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went to this Memphis Blues... Um, barbecue smokehouse. I don't know. We went there for lunch, supper yesterday. Supper yesterday. Supper and we, I got pulled pork. I've been really craving pulled pork lately. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Would you get I, some? I had the chicken, chicken or the something. Barbecue chicken. Yeah. So then we went back in for supper tonight. Yeah. So it was awesome. And Nathan got a free free dessert. They yeah. Had a reward. Loyal customers, I guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I love Kelowna. It's really nice here. Yeah. It's really cool being down in the valley and stuff. So I'd say. 
coolness. Yeah. yeah. Especially having a day off here, you get to yeah. enjoy it a bit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, true. Get mm-hmm. to enjoy it a little bit more than everywhere else yeah. when you have some time. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You guys, uh, is this your first tour? Yeah. Yeah, first time. Okay, you've only been on the road for a little while, but have you found that you have a must-have item at all, a (laughs) go-to comfort? Your pillow? Yeah, I do bring my pillow, which which is good, because it's like, well, most of the spots we've stayed have been, like, have been nice, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. never hurts just to have a, have a pillow along, because you really know where you, where you're going to end up. It's (laughs) true. So I'd say that's my my comfort, bring my pillow. Yeah, Yeah, I don't have... A comfort item, really? No, <laughs> no. You can just go with that one. Yeah, go with That's that good. one. Use my little duffel bag here if I need me. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right. So, how did you guys end up settling on a name like Too Soon Monsoon? Picking a name is tough. Yeah. Yeah, super tough. One day we're trying to figure out a name because we decided. What did we decide that day? Why we needed the name quick? I think maybe we just had booked a show, possibly, yeah. and we're thinking. Yeah, we need a name for the show. So yeah, we had a lot of trouble finding a name. You'd Google something and some band in wherever the states or Europe or something. Yeah, already had always it. taken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was like almost always. Yeah, we kind of like initially as we started planning to be a band, we like started looking for names, yeah. but not seriously until we had to actually put <laughs> yeah. a name down. Yeah. Then we were sitting at uh, somewhere else pub in Saskatoon. Yeah, Saskatoon for an open mic night. Yeah, we were just hanging out and we looked up at one of the lights and there's the word monsoon on it. Yeah. Uh, so I text Kristen. We're like, okay, let's come up with some some short phrases or things that rhyme with monsoon. monsoon and too soon was one of the options. And I'm like, yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. It's catchy. It's catchy. Yeah. It rhymes with Saskatoon. Too yeah. soon monsoon from Saskatoon. Lots of O's. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we said all that. We thought it was cool. Yeah, it works. It mm-hmm. definitely works for sure. So you guys recently released a new EP titled yeah. Side Effects on October twentieth. Where did you guys end up recording that, and how was the recording process like? Yeah, the recording was awesome. This time, uh, like, we recorded it once again with Adam Grant. He used to play bass with One Bad Son. He's getting into some producing now, so we did our last EP with him in July. That one we recorded kind of in, like, bits and pieces. We recorded a song in January and then another one in February, and we did two more in June. So whereas with this one, we recorded over, like, a three-week, four-week chunk in August. You guys were a little more prepared for it this uh, time? Yeah, I'd say a bit more prepared with our sound and the songs. And yeah. just we had the, the time to actually spend yeah. pretty much just three solid weeks just on the EP, which was nice. Yeah. So we did it. He has a home studio set up, so we did most of the vocals and keys there. And Nathan did the drums out in Hanley. Yeah. And yeah, it was cool. awesome. This Adam's really great to work with. And it was nice because like, nice you have the time to... If you wanted to do keys on a song this day or yeah. work on some of the drums one day or the harmonies whenever you were kind of feeling it, it was nice to just be able to yeah. jump into that song on that Take day time to that swap moment. ideas on mm-hmm. what we like and what don't like. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it. Yeah. I think, it, I think, it's, I think it's cool. It's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. well, I think it sounds pretty good. Thank so. you. Well, thank you. I don't know where is it all. Um, how did you guys decide on the name Side Effects for the album? Yeah, th- th- it was a little tricky thinking of a name, too. Um, just, like, when we were talking about the songs, lots of the songs have to do with kind of, like, thoughts and um, experiences and things to do with your mind and kind of the effects of the experience you're going through. So we thought, I guess, like, any song you write is really about yeah. something that's affected you an somehow or an experience. But yeah. these songs particularly seem to have kind of that that mind effect kind of going on. So yeah. We liked the side effect title. Okay, so how has uh, it progressed? How has the band progressed and your writing style progressed from like Little Fire to Side Effects? Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good question. I guess like lots of my writing, I'll usually bring bring the songs to Nathan, yeah. some lyrics and melody, and chord structure stuff, and then Nathan will work on like a beat, some yeah. rhythm. And then we'll really like just kind of work on the structure, on the, the song, and it, yeah. where we like, kind of want to repeat things or cut things down. And then working with Adam too in the songs, yeah. he helps write and fine tune some of the parts too. But yeah. the writing now it's it's gotten especially. I'm excited to get back yeah. from the road and start working on some more songs. Lots of mm-hmm. like the last few months, we've really just been like rehearsing lots of these sets and playing the same stuff kind of yeah. over and over. So we haven't had a lot of time at practices to work on. 
songs. So I've been writing a lot at home, which I'm really excited about. I showed you some of the songs. We yeah. had some time in the vehicle on the way <laughs> up. So, uh, yeah, we're really pumped to, to work on some of those more together as a yeah. band, I think. Now I'm living in Saskatoon, and uh, we just moved there a couple of weeks ago. And we got a basement set up at our new place that we're renting, so we got a nice jam space there, so we'll yeah. be able to <laughs> practice rehearse more, a lot more, like, yeah. not feel like... Before, it was like, if we were at rehearsal, it's like, okay, we got, like, two hours, and then I have to head out, so we can't really waste time. We have to be, like, rehearsing our, yeah. our sets for the shows, but yeah. now we'll have time to, to write and to bounce ideas off and just kind of... Gives you a little more time to relax and mm-hmm. yeah. let things Yeah, which progress. I think you, you need when you're writing yeah. music, so... Oh, definitely. Like, the songs we have worked on, it's been... Yeah, it's been definitely. Great. It's been cool when yeah. we have the time, but I'm really excited to actually... Get back Dig into, into it. it some more, which is cool. Spend a little better time. Okay, on. that's good. You guys have churned out quite a bit of material in a little bit of time, yeah. and you guys are already excited to churn out more. <laughs> have you guys hit any brick walls with that? Have you hit any, like, writer's block, or... Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say so. No. So much. I find, like, the odd time I do complaints, like, oh, I haven't written a song, and then I'll just, like, sit down the piano the next day, and <laughs> something comes something up. comes up. So I find as soon as I start... If I start thinking about too much, then, yeah. then maybe you start getting writer's block. But if you just kind of let it happen when it happens, it's it's good. Yeah. Just go right through it. <laughs> just go through it. If, you, if it feels like it, you're going to write a song, sit down at the piano. Otherwise, don't don't pressure. Or exactly. don't, uh, don't, don't don't force it. Don't yeah. stress yourself over yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Let's talk about some of the songs on your two EPs, Side Effects and Little Fire. Mm-hmm. So, let's start with Old Ghosts. Tell me about that one. What's the meaning behind it? And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were, we were talking a little bit about the songs this morning at the campus radio. And Nathan's like, oh, I wasn't expecting those questions. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. thoughts prepared. <laughs> yeah, he's always prepared for <laughs> But uh, Old Ghosts, that was a song I'd written pieces to probably like seven, eight years ago. And I was telling Nathan, I was like, there's an, like an old video I was just watching I found on my computer of when I was playing it at my parents' house probably like seven, eight years ago. And it's like it's pretty it's not good. I don't ever want it to find its way out in the world. <laughs> but it, it's cool it's really cool seeing the 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 pieces of the song that stuck and that came into yeah. this version of the song. Um but yeah, it's I guess it's more about uh Kind of like, it's it's like a poppy, kind of fun song. It doesn't have like a really serious, no. intense meaning. Like most of the lyrics come from, uh, the songs are quite like personal and have stronger meaning. But this one I think is more just like, uh, just like old ghosts. It could be like old memories coming back to haunt you or old old people or old experiences coming back to haunt you or the effect they still kind of have on you. So it's kind of just a fun song around that idea. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So how about Know Myself? Yeah, Know Myself, I really like Know Myself. This one, um, I wrote the lyrics to this past year. It's about just like, I guess if you're going through like a life change or you're you're doing something you're really certain of, usually there's people who um, have their own thoughts about it and sometimes it's just like negative thoughts or people who are uh, maybe thinking you're, I don't know, unusual or <laughs> you're not making the right decision. So it's just about really trusting yourself and knowing knowing who you are and being proud of who you are and um it's a fun song to write it's one of my favorite ones to play it's got like a solid white stripes feel to yeah it. really big white stripes jack white fan so this is kind of like our i think our kind of our ode to the white stripes a little bit yeah, yeah. okay mm-hmm. how about a couple of the songs off of little fire let's go with the title track itself little fire tell me about that one mm-hmm that was that one was, was kind of written around the same time as Old Ghost two pieces of it. So so like a few of our songs I would bring from when I had written like when I was like nineteen eighteen never really did anything with it. Yeah. And then like but quite a few of them are ones we had written in the yeah. last year, which is cool too. This one though, um, this is more about like I guess like dealing with bits of anxiety and just like thinking about that as the a metaphor for Little Fire. So it's it's always kind of there. You can feel it. You can sense it. Um, you kind of want to, like, keep control of the fire. It can yeah. get bigger if it if you don't keep control of it. So it's, it's kind of around that idea of the fire being a metaphor for anxiety or dealing with some of those feelings. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll ask you about one more song, which you recently released a video for. Tell me a little bit about Balance. Balance. Yeah, that one, we did a cool video for. Yeah. We 
edited together some. You did a good job. Some so you guys did the video yourselves then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I went on... We wanted... Because it's got, like, a cool... It's written in three, four times, so it's... That's, like, a waltz yeah. style. Yeah. So we're, like... Might as well, like, really play up that waltz idea and go back and find some old... Yeah. 1910, 20, 30 footage. So I started by looking for, like, free domain images. So I found this one website that had a bunch of old government videos, kind of. I don't know, whatever they were used for, but they'd be, like, short clips of all these strange things. There's old circus footage and old <laughs> dance dance room, ballroom footage, so it's cool cutting it together. And it, it all lots all of it, like, really seemed to sync well. Obviously, yeah. I was taking, like, waltz dances, so those yeah. ones uh, were able to match up well with the 3-4 beat, but... I like yeah, the sword swallowing and the, the <laughs> flipping, the girls yeah, flipping on the, <laughs> on the guy's feet and stuff. There's some fun, fun parts to it. The song itself, I think, especially live, it's like one of her heaviest songs. I find yeah. you can really lay into that song. It's got some good emotion to it. It really does. Mm-hmm. Kind of fun. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And it's got, I really like the dynamics of it too, where it's like, can get quite intense and then it backs off and yeah. me up that <laughs> I, I love mm-hmm. seeing that part. Um, yeah, lyrically, it's just about, like, things that help balance you out. It could be a person, it can be whatever, but sometimes you need things to kind of bring you up, and maybe level bring you up. down, keep you humble, keep you level a little bit. It's one thing I sort of found with your video as well, is that you guys kind of, it matches the rise and the slowing down yeah, of cool. the tempo yeah. quite well. Sweet, thank it you. It lines up very yeah. well. You guys did a very good job on that. Appreciate that. Yeah, it was fun, fun to do. I think we'll try and do that. With some other, I like visuals with songs, and sometimes it's not easy to do like a full production with every song. So yeah. it's cool to do your own, your own if you can. <laughs> yeah, of course, a little bit of DIY. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. makes Definitely. you feel a little more accomplished and fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna get back into our interview with Greg and Nathan of Too Soon Monsoon, real soon. But before we do that, I just want to take a minute to talk to everybody about Worthless Streetwear. Worthless Streetwear is a brand new clothing company that just started up out in Edmonton, Alberta. They're bringing you the fire this holiday season straight out of the Canadian Badlands with their launch just before winter. You need pullovers or toques to keep you warm? They got that in over 10 different colors and styles. But you gotta hurry because items are moving quick. The Pinkerton toque? It's already gone. The Ashes to Ashes crew neck, it's sold out too. Maybe you want to grab yourself a pastel pullover and stand out from everybody else. Every letter has a different color and is stitched separately because you know Worthless Streetwear wants you to look good while you're out on the town catching a show or hanging with your friends. Simple, sleek, and stylish, Worthless isn't just a name, it's a state of mind, an expression of being. Personally, I'm a fan of the negative styled items. Crisp bright white with solid black lettering? I already ordered mine. Have you? You can find them over at worthlessstreetwear.com. That is worthlessstreetwear.com. Alright, without further ado, we're going to get back into our interview with Too Soon Monsoon. The Desert Tiger Podcast. All right, you guys have a very, very uh, prominent stage presence. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I would almost name it as like an Elton John or like a Billy Joel crossed with like an Adam <laughs> Levine. That's, that's <laughs> weird, yeah. So do you guys like practice your stage presence quite often or is that something that comes naturally to you or? Well, mine, I've just been doing it for a long time. So yeah. I just kind of built my stage presence up in these mm-hmm. last, I don't know how many years. Yeah. So uh, I just do the same thing <laughs> every time I play with Greg. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, and I think it just comes from watching so many artists. Yeah. I, when I was younger, I went to some workshop. I was like 15 years old, and uh, I can't really remember who it was with. But anyways, they said um, one of their, their tips was to just go to as many concerts as possible. That's yeah. kind of your homework as a musician and watch the artists and watch everybody, the background singers, the the drummer is what are they doing during the set what are they doing in between songs what are they doing whenever you know like who are they watching how are they moving and i think it's it's really important especially for us as a two-piece because we're we're stationary on the stage i don't really 
leave my keyboard for anything at the moment. Nathan's at the kit, so you, you, have, to, you have to keep it interesting. Yeah. So yeah, so if you if we just stood there, if I just stood there and didn't really like move around or do much with my face it'd be and pretty stuff, boring. it'd be boring. Yeah, okay. so I think it's it's a way to just keep people interested. I like to perform. All my favorite singers are like big performers or interesting personalities or dress cool or interesting on stage. So I think all that just is a way to just bring the set up a little bit live. Well, it's all about yeah. creating moments, yeah. right? Yeah, for it's sure. It's those little pieces of those little movements with your hands and your <laughs> face, just the little turns can just create so much more energy in a set right. yeah. and add so much more to it rather than just being like, oh, these guys are okay, but they don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's right. Like during balance, there's a spot where you hit the oh, yeah. I like to pop my yeah. shoulders at that spot. <laughs> <laughs> Which is cool. You have to check that out. Too. Yeah, you guys move very well to your music, which Thanks. shows that you enjoy it, which, mm-hmm. and it makes it a lot easier for other people to move to your music exactly. when you can move to that's your right. music. That's right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, um, after this tour, what else is on the horizon for Too Soon Monsoon? <laughs> What's well, coming up next? Plan on doing a full-length album. Oh. That would be our biggest, biggest mm-hmm. goal here that's coming up here. Is yeah. that going to be with Granny again? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely. Love, yeah, he's so awesome yeah. to work with. It's, it makes, it's so important to be comfortable around the producer who's exactly. recording the songs. Like you should be able to communicate completely yeah. openly with them and discuss the songs and your ideas and feel comfortable saying if you don't like something or if you do so working with him is awesome yeah. so for sure yeah we'll be doing the full length with him I think the plan is to kind of finish writing it the next yeah. few months and lock down the songs and then do some recording hopefully like a summer or late spring yeah. release would be the goal for the, for the music at least and then uh, I plan to do a video for Faded when we get back from the road here okay I'll have that out before the end of the year nice yeah and then some festivals in the summer the show is early winter. Yep, and then but. hopefully plan a eastern tour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, through Ontario yeah. and then GTA, maybe a little bit of Quebec. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the plan. I think pro- it most likely we'll just stick to what you suggested. We'd love to get out to the Maritimes, but that might be biting off more than we can chew. Yeah. It's a little bit harder, <laughs> especially as a smaller band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people don't go out there, so they like to support people who do quite often, but. It's really hard to get out there and right. break out there, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. So we might have, might have to wait a little bit on yeah. that. But. Especially when the drive is so far in between Jeez. Quebec and <laughs> flying anywhere. That's right, yeah. It's it. Is it's, I know that in between Winnipeg itself and Ontario can be a little bit of a hassle sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not... Yeah, I guess hey, it's a bit more spread apart than yeah. going out, out west, but... Yeah. That's our plan. We want to get out east for sure, out to Toronto in that area. Once you can get yeah. to Toronto and the GTA, you can play like yeah, eight or nine different spots. places. That's but... right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. All right. So, uh, who are some of your biggest bands or musicians? Well, or musicians while you were growing up. For me, I liked a lot of '60s, '70s, and '80s rock. Okay. I got like The Beatles, T Rex, Kiss. Oh, nice. Crew. Yeah. Yeah, we were just talking about Kiss in the vehicle the other day. (laughs) Nathan brought it up, and I was like, oh, how can you not talk to my dad about Kiss before he's, like, an original Kiss Army member? He was just, like, a hardcore (laughs) Kiss fan, so next time you see my dad, you'll have to definitely bring up Kiss. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they were a big influence on me growing up. I don't know why, but they were. Hey, they had a huge stage presence. They were very big icons in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. They were great. All right, so if you had to dress up as a member of KISS, <laughs> who would you dress up as? Oh, probably Paul Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm the drummer, it'd still be cool to wear a star on my eye. Who wants to be Peter Chris? Exactly. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Any yeah. <laughs> others? Uh, let me see here. I got down. Hmm. Who have I been listening to recently? Probably Fantagram has been really cool. Oh, okay. I've been listening to a lot of them lately. I mm-hmm. went and seen them a couple of weeks back in Saskatoon. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then another band, Against Me. They've been really cool. Oh, lately. I love them. Yeah. I seen them actually last month too back in Stoom. That was really cool. Yeah. They were I amazing. wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, you, you get a chance, man. They're so good. I've mm-hmm. seen them three times before. Oh, so. oh there we go. There yeah, go. I've seen them uh, when he was Tom, Tom and oh, when he yeah. was twi- twice yeah. when he was Tom and once when he was Laura. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Now she's great. Now oh, she's great. she you you can the difference in their stage show is amazing because the comfort level in his singing and his playing is cha- in her singing and playing, yeah. I guess I should say, has changed so much more Definitely. since when they were trying to become like a stadium act yeah. back around White Crosses. Oh, like yeah. you could really tell that they weren't really a stadium band and you could tell that he wasn't very comfortable up there. Yeah. But now that he's Laura, like she rocks the stage. Amazing. It's amazing. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's yeah, so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about yourself? Yeah, I guess um, like White Stripes we talked about. Listen to White Stripes. One of those really, really big two pieces for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was lucky enough to see them on their last tour when they came through Saskatoon. It was so amazing. And uh, I went to that secret show at the Bull. Jealous. Night too. It, was like, <laughs> oh, it was awesome. Um, yeah, so definitely the White Stripes. Um, Fiona Apple, she's a huge influence of mine as well. She's a singer-songwriter, lots of stuff on the piano. I find lots of my writing kind of similar to singing style a lot from her um, Stevie Nicks Fleetwood Mac listen to a lot of them um, great band all yeah. together I mean fantastic so yeah. Yeah. Lauren Hill and the Fugees Lauren Hill specifically I really like her her work I creep a lot of like her live videos on YouTube because she hasn't put anything out really since like 2001 besides the odd single here and there but she's got so much good music that just isn't hasn't been released so Hopefully huh. someday she puts <laughs> another Hopefully. album out. It's like she, it looks like she's always recording and stuff, but I don't know. But yeah, I'd say those are like the main, my main influences. Okay, mm-hmm. so do you guys have any guilty pleasures in music? I feel like you shouldn't. Like there should it, it, be guilty pleasures, but there are. I it's guess. hard to call yeah. it guilty pleasure. But is there anything like if <laughs> I, one of your friends was hanging out with you <laughs> and you were like, I don't know if I should pull this out. <laughs> I, I guess. don't know if I should put this on the aux cord. That's right. I, okay, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Um, I'd say I, I'd love Beyonce and like, Destiny's Child. I was <laughs> and like 90s pop. Well, that's like when I grew up. I was like 10 years old in the 90s and whatever, so. Well, it was really it was, like, big back then, It was all then, big, right? like NSYNC and that stuff. And like Justin Timberlake, he's a big influence of mine. I don't give, I don't give him enough credit. I listened to loads of NSYNC and all that growing up. So I think that pop and like the quick lyrics of like Destiny's Child and Justin Timberlake and like their movements and stuff I find that it shows up in our our work and our performance (laughs) I guess I don't admit it as much that's actually (laughs) one artist that I did not think of that totally shows up in your performance Uh is Justin Timberlake yeah yeah he's cool yeah yeah (laughs) yeah he gets uh called JT quite a bit sometimes yeah Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 that works got to right yeah Yeah. he's a cool guy (laughs) yeah do you have any guilty pleasures? Uh, I really like Sinead O'Connor. Back in her 80s, she was an amazing vocalist. I thought she was great, and I still listen to her. No, she's still got really good vocals yeah, on her. Yeah, I mean, a, a, a little compares. more problems now a little than more then, problems, but, but... who doesn't have problems? A yeah. couple, couple baby daddies here and there, but... Yeah, <laughs> but yeah <laughs> but no, I thought that. she was great. Yeah, I still listen to her music. Oh, very yeah, talented. Awesome. Very talented mm-hmm. all around. She yeah. recently played a uh, folk fest in Regina. Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah. Sweet. Fuck, I mean, I did, did you see, see that? that? <laughs> I did not no. see it, unfortunately, but... Be cool. Jeez. <laughs> Yes. It was either that, this year or there. last year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Probably last year then, because I would have. I definitely would have found out if it was this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, it was one of the last two years. She was totally there. I'm pretty sure. Damn. Maybe she'll come back. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. One can only hope, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh, where did you guys get your start in music? When did you start playing? Me, it, probably when I was like six five around that time but I have a musical family you know my dad was a drummer my uncle was a drummer my baba was a a successful musician back in her day and baba means grandma in Ukraine yeah yeah so yeah that's kind of she always pushed me to, to play more drums so it was easy to practice with having her growing up with her okay yeah nice mm-hmm. that's basically my start in music did you start with drums yeah Okay. Yeah, I started with drums, and then she threw me in uh, guitar lessons as well, so I learned how to play guitar and ukulele okay. as a child, yeah. But I awesome. stuck with drums, so it was more of my thing. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and I started, I took piano lessons, started those when I was five, like classical training or whatever, so I did that all until I was about 
15, 16, so I got my grade 8 piano. Took some singing lessons in between there, too. Um, my mom was bugging me the other day. She's like, you're good at piano because I was taking my grade 8 piano when I was pregnant with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, maybe. They, I don't know. They say, like, some <laughs> studies that music transfers through. But, That's um, true. <laughs> yeah, so my mom, she was, she's big into music, too. Uh, but, yeah, lots of, like, musical training and then... I started writing my own stuff when I was like 15, 16, and then kind of branched out to just doing like solo performances, coffee house type stuff. And okay. Yep. That's about it. And then just kept writing and performing, and, and then and found Nathan. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and the rest was history. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so what do you guys do on your time outside of being in Too Soon Monsoon? Oh. Work. Work and family. <laughs> Work and family. Yeah. I got a little boy, about six years old now. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's his name? Oscar. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that keeps me. That's a full-time job in itself. Probably chasing him around and yep. taking chasing care of him. And doing kid things and, you know, being a father. And with my the wife at home as well. Okay. So, yeah, pretty busy life, actually. Between work, music, and family. Well, you gotta stay busy, right? Yeah, so that's basically my life is work, music, and family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As long as you're happy, then that's yeah. all that matters. Oh, yeah, I definitely have to. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. I guess, like, similar, working a bit. I don't have any children right now, which is okay, but I have a dog. <laughs> hey, so I have a fur baby busy. too, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, I felt like the last year, all of our time was spent driving if we weren't in the city working so we were living out of Humboldt my wife and I were living in Humboldt but we just moved to Saskatoon okay three, beginning of October so now all of a sudden it's like oh I got some extra free time so okay. it's nice it's nice to have some <laughs> some free time I know it's like oh <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah I like to read I like to do art I haven't done too much painting and stuff lately but it'd be nice to get into some of that some writing I like writing stories and Things like that as well too. It'd be kinda like a goal of mine down the road be to maybe publish publish some writing maybe someday. Any short stories. Specific, okay. I like writing short Style. stories. It'd be awesome to write a novel, but that's loads of work. So fiction, yeah. non fiction. <laughs> I like fiction. Yeah, okay. Making stuff up. Yeah. I always have lots of thoughts going around. Kristen always says and she's write that write that down. <laughs> like, what if this happens? What if that happens? <laughs> she's make cool. it up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm actually in the process of building a world right now for like trying to write like a three piece of novels. Sweet, like a like a Lord of the Rings type. Yeah, yeah. I'm like yeah. actually building cool. like a giant continent, and oh. I've got it like sectioned off in like five little pieces right now. Sweet. And I'm just building right now. I'm just like character creating for like each region. Yeah, I guess you'd have to figure all mm-hmm. that out. First before yeah, really. <laughs> Once you have good characters, and the story can carry it, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Good, good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is the what kind of painting do you like to do? Uh, I mainly just acrylics. I actually haven't done much painting in like the last year and a half, two years. I do lots of like, portraits and stuff. I do. I would like to do more in landscape. Yeah, landscape stuff too. So inspiration out. You got some inspiration in this landscape. Do (laughs) do some of that. We got when we got back from Maui. Went to Maui for our honeymoon. We were so sad to leave Maui. So we both found our favorite landscape. I'm talking. I'm not talking about Nathan. I'm talking about my wife. (laughs) This time we both. (laughs) 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 That's right. Did you bring your paint? Yeah. Got my acrylics. Yeah. Chris and I were so sad to leave Maui. We found our favorite pictures, our landscape pictures, and we both painted those. I have that up in my office right now to look at when I look at that. Painting, That's pretty awesome. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. How did yeah. you enjoy Ma- Maui? Love it. Yeah. Love I'd, it. I'd want to move. If I could, I'd move back to Maui and live there. It's amazing. I love I love the sun. I love beaches and nature and stuff. Like winter, I care less about winter. Yeah. A week of snow is more than enough for me, so uh, to live I, somewhere I, tropical would be I awesome. understand that. I'm a little happy that I'm out here now. <laughs> yeah. 
I used to work outside, so... Oof. Yeah, <laughs> this is a nice change. <laughs> yeah, I was at yeah. a job fair yesterday, and uh-huh. this lady is asking me about, like, shoveling outside. And it's like, oh, it gets, it gets like, minus 25. Is that too cold for you? Uh-huh. I laughed at her. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's better than minus 40. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I've worked, like, weeks on in a back-to-back in minus 45. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I see uh, Nathan himself has a little bit of tattoos. I'm not sure if Greg does. You got want to go into a little bit of detail about what you, you got there? Or? The tattoos, I started when I was really young, and I got most of them when I was really young. Yeah? But I got them kind of traveling across Canada and that. Really? So, yeah, when I was younger, I kind of like to move around a bit. So sort of a road map of your travels type thing? You could say that. Yeah, pretty That's much. That's pretty fantastic. Yeah, I don't remember a whole lot of my tattoos getting them in that, but, you know. No worries. Do you okay. have a favorite tattoo? Do you have one that stands out that you enjoy the most or means the most to you? Probably the animal on my neck. Okay. I got animal on my neck. That's oh, probably the only one that... Yeah. Animal from the Muppets. Yeah, nice. I kind of meant a lot, you know, animal growing up was a big inspiration, I guess you can say. That's your biggest inspiration. Maybe, yeah. Your animal, biggest yeah. Influence, that was yeah. the biggest childhood <laughs> yeah. idol. Yeah, he was great. He was great. But yeah, I don't really have too many stories about my tattoos. You That's know, fair. It's kind of like I draw something, I like it, and then I'll get it. Okay. Yeah, so so you moment. draw your own yeah. designs then? Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, all my tattoos I've drawn up myself. Fantastic. Yeah. That's pretty good. How yeah. long have you been drawing for? Oh, since I was a wee little yet lad. Do you have like a... Like, Greg, I, you know, I paint okay. too as well. Do you have a specific style that you like to paint, or a specific, like, type of art? Ugh. It all depends on the time. Like, How you're feeling? Yeah. Okay. I, drew, I painted a portrait of my family one time, and then the next day, you know, I painted a trees and birds, you know, kind of in a gothic kind of look, you know? Nice. Stuff like that, yeah. So it all depends on. I'm like just learning of this now. Yeah, it's hey, cool. like, it's you know, we're painting at my house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like okay, and, we like to try and bring these things out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but I don't really paint very much anymore. Just trying to find time is pretty tough. Well, it's hard when you're yeah. chasing around a kid and exactly. busy with work and music and balancing yeah. it all. And once mm-hmm. I get insp- inspired again, you know, I'll probably do it sometime, hopefully soon. But when it strikes see, you, right? Yeah, when it strikes. See. Yeah, I well, just can't good. pick up a pen every day and you know draw something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. All right. Well, I think you, I think we've held you for long enough here. You got a set. Yeah, we got it. Pretty soon, yeah. so we should probably get back to the venue and Sounds let you guys good. free. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you very much for Thank joining you. me here on the Desert Tiger Podcast. Yeah, thanks. So it's been much awesome for having, having us. you. It's fun. All right. All right. I want to give a huge shout out and a big, big thank you to both Nathan and Greg of Too Soon Monsoon. For joining us here on episode 9 of the Desert Tiger Podcast. You can find Too Soon Monsoon on Facebook, Instagram, and their own website where you can sign up for their mailing list and stay up to date on what they're doing, which I highly suggest you do because you're going to want to keep your eyes on these guys. I also want to give a big shout out to Worthless Streetwear where you can get clothing that is simple, sleek, and stylish for yourself and look fresh this winter season and stay warm. You can find them at worthlessstreetwear.com. I also want to give a big shout out to the Nerd Corpse podcast. You can find them on iTunes, Google Play, and all other places that you can find your favorite podcasts like the Desert Tiger Podcast Weekly, Enlist with the corpse today and stay in the latest news about movies, TV, what's going on with stars, trailers, all those things. Stay in the loop. These guys do a very good job of keeping you up to date. So do yourself a favor and subscribe to the Nerdcore podcast today. I also want to give a big, big shout out to you, the listener of the Desert Tiger podcast. It's listeners like you that allow us to do what we do every single week here on the podcast. I want to give a big shout out to our listeners, Alyssa and Annette, for shouting out some question suggestions. They gave us some question suggestions for future guests on the show, and we couldn't be more thankful for Alyssa and Annette 
not only supporting the show, but caring enough to actually input what they want to hear. Because here at the podcast, we want to bring you what not only inspires and drives creators, authors, artists, painters, musicians, everything and anything we have. It's you that truly allows us to do that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, for hitting that subscribe button, for reviewing and rating the show on iTunes. All these things make a huge, huge difference, and we are super thankful that you have joined us here in our flagship month. In this flagship month, we've started off with Danny Duggan, a wrestler. And we've gone from Danny Duggan through acoustic pop punk, we've gone to alternative rock, we have punk rock, we have hardcore, we've interviewed a college football prodigy, and now here we're bringing you a pop rock act. All these acts from across North America. Screaming females from New Jersey, Jesus Peace from Philadelphia, We had Belvedere from Calgary. We have Alone I Walk from Winnipeg. We've got tons of people, and we are willing and able to continue bringing you more every single week because of you. Because of you and your support, and we couldn't be more thankful for that. As you know, every week here on the podcast, every show, we like to send you off with a little bit of a motivational quote. It is impossible to live without failing at something. Unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all. In which case, you failed by default. That is a quote by J.K. Rowling, author of Harry Potter. Our show this Thursday is going to feature Amber Harper Young, a comedian out of Vancouver, and I am very excited for that, and I hope you are too. Thank you for listening to the Desert Tiger Podcast. The Desert Tiger Podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. iTunes, Google Play Music, and Stitcher. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Thanks for listening.